Everyone said it was impossible, that it couldn't be done, that it wasn't right. A female president of a publicly listed agency. Meet Mary Wells, the very first female president of a publicly traded advertising agency. Wells was pitching Continental Airlines, a campaign centered on a 24 karat gold jet. She was hypnotic that day. Hell, she was hypnotic most days. I think she could have given Marta Hari a run for her money. Everyone, and I mean everyone, was staring. As was he, Harding Lawrence, a man whose coolness and composure had seen the airline grow five times over since his arrival. He asked if he could see her outside briefly. There's no easy way of saying this. I'm... I'm leaving, but I... Um, I want you to come with me. To work on Braniff International. Who? Braniff International. An airline, they aren't well known right now. But have exceptional routes down south. Okay, he didn't say the last part, but it's not a lie. The sharp-witted Lawrence had convinced the board to give him the top job. His first decree, new planes. State-of-the-art Boeing 727s, twice as fast as a military service Douglas DC-4s and seriously high flyers. The ride, smooth as butter. Harding Lawrence just needed to find people to fill the seats. Cue Mary Wells and her creative team. Charlie Moss, an exceptional writer. Mary Wells, now the unofficial CEO. Miles Parker, art director. Mary was standing in a check-in line on her way back from Chicago and realized something. It was all just bland. The terminal was off-white. The floors, cheap vinyl. Even on the plane, no food, average service. Beige seats. Stewardesses dressed like nurses. Pilots like military officers. There was nothing to get excited about. And when she got back to New York, she told Charlie and Miles they got to work. What's this? We come up with this maybe once a day. It's too obvious. Obvious? It's divine. We should do this. Wells wanted a flight with Braniff International to feel like an adventure with you at the center. James Bond, Earhart or Charles Lindbergh. You could be whoever you wanted with all the fine food, class and razzmatazz. It'd be a party in the sky. Mary hired Alexander Girard to smack a bright, vibrant color on each aircraft. The interiors were Herman Miller fabrics. The same went for the passenger lounges too. Everything would be new. New furniture, new luggage, trolleys, staircases, vans, tow trucks, all in the same pastel colors. Emilio Pucci designed the crew's uniform, inclusive of space-themed plexiglass helmets to protect beehive hairdos from the senses. Wells changed the name of stewardesses to hostesses and got them to change outfits four times on long-haul flights, calling it the airstrip. By the time all this was done, the accompanying ad campaign seemed secondary. But still, it was genius. Passengers played a game. They'd book flights on different colored planes just to say they'd been on the full set of seven. Mary Wells, the name etched in history. In 1967, she became Mary Wells Lawrence. 